السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد. عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم. Do you ever wonder when you go to one of those super centers such as Walmart or Target why they always have inventory and they almost never run out of inventory? There is something that such organizations implement or apply called the supply chain management. That's the term used in the business world. It started as procurement, it started as warehouse management and different, different names for it. But now we refer to it as supply chain management, managing the supply chain. How to bring in the goods into your establishment and make sure that this, these goods are always available for the consumers. To kind of clarify this point in something that I hope that we all can relate to. I'll ask you this question. Have you ever thought about how the falafel sandwich is made? Have you ever thought about how or what it takes or what goes into making a falafel sandwich? What we do, we go to a restaurant and we just say falafel sandwich. Two minutes later you have the falafel sandwich, you pay for it, you're on your way. But we never think about how much work and what resources go into making the falafel sandwich. I use this example in the academic world to explain the supply chain management. And quite frankly, uh, explaining the supply chain management concept and the theories behind all that, it takes more than one academic semester, but I'll try to narrow it down or explain it, clarify it using the falafel sandwich. Now the ingredients that we are familiar with making the falafel sandwich would be bread. Oh, I forgot to add hummus. We'll add that to the list. Bread, hummus, falafel, salad, tahini, some maybe hot sauce, and the wrapping, right? I did say salad. I'm not trying to make you guys hungry, but bear with me. The person who makes the falafel sandwich at the restaurant has all the ingredients right there. Right? But he had to get the bread from somewhere. That somewhere could be a restaurant or one of those establishments like Jetro or Restaurant Depot. or he can get it from the bakery. So we go back to the supermarket and we see that the supermarket gets the bread from the bakery. See the supply chain. Bakery, supermarket, restaurant, your sandwich. The baker himself or herself, these days we have women who bake, they have to get the flour, they have to get the salt, they have to get the oil, the water, da, 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 and the machinery to make the bread. So they have to get the bread ingredients from elsewhere. So that's even one step backward in the supply chain. We're not going to go into detail, extreme detail, to explain the falafel sandwich, but I want you to get this idea. The baker makes the bread, <coughs> ships it to the supermarket, supermarket ships it to the restaurant. That's just for the bread. The salad. The guy who's making the falafel sandwich also has to get the ingredients for the salad. The tomato, the parsley, the cucumbers, the salt, the oil, da 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 da, da this whole thing. He does not grow his own tomatoes, obviously. I'm assuming. He doesn't grow his own cucumbers, doesn't make the salt, so he has to get them from somewhere else. That somewhere else could be the supermarket. But also the supermarket still, they don't grow the 
vegetables that they use into making the salad that goes into making the falafel sandwich. So they have to get them from somewhere else, possibly Detro or Restaurant Depot. But also, Restaurant Depot does not grow their own vegetables. So they have to go to the farms. And if we go to the farms, the farmers, they have to secure the water, the seeds, or the small plants to grow them, and the fertilizer, and the machinery, the farming machinery, etc. This is how much work has to go into just making a small bowl of salad. The tahina, or before the tahina, before I forget, what Abu Ala, what Abu Imad mentioned, hummus. Sometimes they open the bread and they put some hummus on the bread to make the falafel sandwich. The hummus. It's made with chickpeas that are boiled in a pot with fire or some kind of heating mechanism, whether it's natural fuel or butane gas or what have you. And then they have to mix it and grind it and mix it some more and prepare it and put some more ingredients on it just to make the hummus. Same idea. The tahina. You can go to a supermarket and get the tahina or you can go to one of the Muslim stores here, you can go to restaurant people, but where did they get that tahina from? They got it from a mill. The mill had to get it from, had to get the sesame seeds from the farmer. Sesame seeds from the farmer into the mill that makes a tahina that ships it over to the supermarket so the supermarket can sell it to the falafel maker or the falafel sandwich maker to make a falafel sandwich so we can enjoy a falafel sandwich. The falafel itself, the main ingredient in the falafel sandwich. I know some of us know how to make the mix itself, which requires parsley, water, salt, baking powder, and the main ingredient is chickpeas. And every one of those ingredients, it has to be brought from a different source. And that different source possibly got it from another different source. And possibly even another different source. Hence, the supply chain management. What goes into making the bread? What goes into making the falafel itself? What goes into making the bahina? What goes into making the sandwich itself? What goes into making the hot sauce that we use onto the falafel sandwich? We never think about these things. And I know to some this may sound silly, talking about a falafel sandwich, but it's a bigger concept that I'm trying to drive here. What goes into making something that we take so granted, that we take for granted? What is it that has to go into making the bread? What is it that has to go into making the falafel? What is it that has to go into making anything? that we take for granted. Anything. The soap that we wear, the socks that we wear, the glasses we wear, the cars that we drive, what goes into making all of these things that we just take for so granted? The wrapping itself. Some use paper, then silver, and some even put it in a plastic bag. All of these things have to be brought from another source. And that other source has to bring it from another source. And another source, that how much goes into just the wrapping itself. How about the time to make the falafel sandwich? It takes two or three minutes, four minutes, whatever it takes to make a falafel sandwich, to fry the falafel, to cut the, to chop the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the parsley and make the salad. To prepare all of these things just for you to enjoy a falafel sandwich in two minutes after you order it. Frying the falafel requires a, a big frying pan that comes from a supplier. The oil, the frying oil, the ingredients to make the mixture to make the falafel, the butane gas or whatever gas we use or the natural gas that we use to fry the falafel. The whole establishment that we have to rent, pay rent, pay employees, salaries, electricity, utilities, etc., 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 just for you to enjoy a falafel sandwich government fees, all of these things, we never think about these things. The falafel sandwich that I'm talking about here is not really a falafel sandwich. I'm talking about the Islamic Center of South Florida. The establishment that you come here frequently, most of us come on Fridays, 
and we hope that everyone will start coming every day to the center. That a lot of people take for granted that they don't understand how much work, how much efforts, how much resources has to be put into this Islamic center so we can come on Fridays and do what? Pray in peace, pray in quietness, pray in cleanliness, pray and just be in a peace of mind in the Islamic center of South Florida. Have we thought about how much work has to go into doing this? How many, how, have we thought about the resources that have to go into making sure that this is presented in hopefully the best way possible to the community? This is our falafel sandwich. We never think about these things. We just take things for granted. We walk up to the cashier and order a falafel sandwich two minutes later, here it is, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, whatever. We come to the masjid here and we complain. Some people make it their business complaining about every little thing that happens here. Oh, parking. It takes me five minutes to park. And that same person goes and spends about a whole hour looking for a parking when they go to a Miami Heats game or whatever game that they go to. What we have to go through here just to present the Islamic Center of South Florida to you at, with, the, with this condition, with this, with this level, and I'm not saying this is perfect, I'm not saying this is optimal, I'm not saying this is the best that it can be. There's a lot of work that goes into it. There are a lot of people who do things in the masjid here, in the center here, that most people who have been frequenting this masjid for the past 20 or 30 years don't even know their names. I have had the pleasure of working with several people in the center for over the past two and a half years. And I'm going to recognize some of this, those people because a lot of people don't appreciate and don't recognize their work. If I were to appreciate and recognize everyone, it would take me a whole hour, maybe two hours just doing so. But there are individuals who will do things behind the scenes, behind closed doors, without anyone knowing about them because they seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like everyone to recognize them and appreciate what they do. And by mentioning these individuals, I'm not sure changing anyone who contributes to the message. Zakumullah khairan everyone. Nadir Samur. Nadir Samur is referred to as the keeper or the custodian. How many of us really know how much Nadir Samur works in the masjid? Day and night. Even coordinating things when he is doing his other job. Muhammad Bakr and his wife. The two team, the two member team that clean this masjid, even at times that we don't even pay them anything, they come here and participate in cleaning and keeping this masjid clean, just for us to enjoy it. Brother Abul, how many of us know that Brother Abul is the one that spearheads taking care of all the trees around here in the masjid? Five acres, planting trees, trimming trees, watering trees. How many of us know that? Sister Ziba and her children who take it upon themselves to clean up the masjid as much as possible. After every event, her son goes into the kitchen and he makes sure all the utensils, everything that was used for any event that we serve food, cleaned. There are many people I can thank, but there are people that we can call them the unknown soldiers that we should recognize. Because this falafel sandwich that you are in right now, it takes a whole lot of effort, a lot of resources to bring it up to this. And we should recognize this. We should not take it for granted. And everyone should pull their weight. Everyone needs to put in and pitch in into the center as much as possible. And before I finish, again, Jazakumullah khairan for everyone that contributes to the masjid. Whether we know it or we don't. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي وراكم تستغفروه نور الرحيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.